Are you a morning person? I'm not. Hi, I'm Marissa from Beautifully Organized. I love sleeping in. I hate waking up to an alarm. I like to wake up naturally with the birds and the breeze. I like a calm and smooth morning and I really hate rushing and nagging people to get up and get moving and get ready for school and and I just really hate that sort of juggle when you're trying to get everything ready for the day before you run out the door. I think my hate for busy mornings is one of the main reasons that I work for myself and one of the main reasons that I work from home. So I have a list of things that I can do at night that make the next morning calmer. And if mornings tend to feel rushed and stressed for you too, these nightly tasks are going to make things so much smoother. So give them a try. But you don't have to do all of these things if it feels like too much. If you're already tired from your busy day, we don't want to add more to your plate that's going to make that day even worse. I don't do them all all the time. I don't do them all every night. We're trying to make life easier, not add more pressure. So just choose one or two to start with and yeah, give them a try. And then later, if and when you're ready, you can add more. I also recommend delegating some of these to your partner and your children because as mums, we should not have to do it all. Number one is to check your planner or your schedule for tomorrow or your diary or your calendar. You just want to be clear on everything you're doing tomorrow so that you can get all of the things you're going to need to take with you ready tonight. And if you have high schoolers, ask them to check their class timetable as well so that they know which books they're going to need to take to school tomorrow. Number two is to brain dump all of your to-dos for tomorrow. You want to get them out of your head and onto paper. You will feel so much more relaxed once everything is written down because it frees up mental space and it's really going to help you sleep better too once it's out of here. Number three is to pack your bags for tomorrow. So a few examples, your handbag, pack the essentials, things like keys, sunglasses, your wallet, that sort of thing. The baby bag. I always kept a post-it note inside the bag. It had a list of everything that you need to repack the bag so that you could leave the next day. The kids can pack their school bags. Primary schoolers will just usually need a hat, their homework and a bus pass if they take the bus. And then in the morning, that's when you can add the lunchbox and the drink bottle. But high schoolers, yeah, they're going to need to check that they have the right books packed for tomorrow's classes. Do they need a calculator? Do they need extras for school that day? And a go bag. These are for the extras you're going to need if you're running errands. So if you're taking paperwork out with you or items to put in the post or you're going to need your laptop or shopping bags, pop them in your go bag. The next thing is to pack your lunches. Keep it really, really simple. You can just pop some of your dinner leftovers into a sandwich container or make a simple sandwich and put it in the container. Stick that in the fridge ready for tomorrow and the bulk of the lunch is done. But if you have room in the fridge for the entire lunchbox, you can put the sandwich or the leftovers in along with a snack and a piece of fruit tomorrow morning when you leave. All you have to do is add an ice pack and you're ready to go. It just makes lunches really quick and easy and honestly, leftovers, so easy. The next one is to wash your dishes and tidy up the kitchen. I promise walking into a clean and tidy kitchen in the morning makes life so much easier. So wash or stack the dishwasher as you cook dinner so that you can get most of the dishes out of the way before you even sit down and eat. And then after dinner, do the last few plates and pots and pans after you eat and pack up your leftovers away for lunch tomorrow at the same time. Now, if you're doing hand washing and it just feels like too much at the end of the day, skip drying the dishes. Just stack them on the dish rack and let them air dry overnight. It's not that hard to put the dry dishes away in the morning while you're making your coffee. The next one is to put a load of dirty clothes into the washing machine. You can turn it on now if you're going to have time to hang it in the morning or you can just put the clothes in tonight and then in the morning add your washing powder and turn it on before you leave so that it's ready to hang or dry when you get home. The next one is to get tomorrow's outfits ready. I like to choose what I'm going to wear. This is a great time for you to check it for any rips or hems that have come down that you might need to quickly fix. If it needs an iron, now's the time to do it, but really who irons anymore? <laughs> choose your accessories, your shoes. It's really, really handy to have everything ready so that you can just get up and put it on the next day. And also it's a great opportunity for your kids to go and get their uniforms for tomorrow ready and to find their shoes because my kids just take off their shoes wherever they happen to be. Nobody knows where they are in the morning. So finding them the night before is going to save a lot of that chaotic looking around hunting for them the next morning, which is so much more relaxing. 
The next one is to take a shower. Hear me out, unless you're doing a really big workout in the morning, nighttime showers are so much better because they're so much more relaxing. It is uninterrupted you time, especially if you're able to actually lock the bathroom door. You don't have to rush with a shower at night like you do in the morning when everybody's in a hurry to get ready for work and get ready for school and they're worried about missing the bus and they're knocking on the door trying to make you hurry up. Nobody likes that. Now with a nighttime shower, if you have older kids, they're chilling out after dinner. If you have babies and toddlers, you can put them to bed and then have a warm, relaxing shower. It feels like your reward for getting through a tough day. And I always found if I showered in the morning when I had a baby, I could hear that phantom cry all the time. But at nighttime, it's like I was more relaxed because my partner was home and I knew you could get the baby for me. Plus, nighttime showers allow for a little bit of extra time for pampering, like a hair mask or a face mask or doing your nails if you want. The next one is to check that your alarm is set for the morning. Oh, I hate alarms, but there are days when I have to use them. And so, yeah, it's helpful if I remember to actually set them. I like to add a snooze or two uh, because I think that makes it a little bit easier for me. I like to trick myself into thinking I've snuck in a few extra minutes of sleep. So you can give that a try if you think it'll work for you too. And if you're worried that you're gonna sleep through your alarm, definitely set it for half an hour earlier than you need it and set a second alarm for your real wake up time. And the last thing is to take 10 minutes to either journal or read screen free. Get out the old paper book and go for it. These 10 minutes without a screen at the end of your day where you're either getting your random thoughts out onto paper or you're distracting your mind with a lovely story, this helps clear away the rest of the mental load for the day and it lets that buzzing of your brain start to fade. It helps you calm your mind and body and it gets you ready for sleep. And if you wanna read for more than 10 minutes or journal for more than 10 minutes, Go for it. It's a really lovely way to end your day. So those are my favorite nighttime tasks that make my mornings so much easier. And I'd love to hear yours too. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye. This is bugging me. It's always one piece. Definitely said it half I burnt my hand today. Oh, hi. I just wanted to let you know before you watch the next video, we have some really good resources that are totally free and we run regular workshops online. So you can join me live if you want to. Check out the links below and hopefully I'll see you there soon.